In this video we are going to discuss the use of concentric needle electrode for the recording of the jitter. But first a few words about the classical uh, single fiber EMG and uh, some of its principles. Here is the uh, recording area of a concentric needle electrode and there were many fibers here to be recorded and that was not a good idea to obtain just the activity from one muscle fiber and therefore a needle uh, electrode was constructed with a much smaller recording surface and the uh, selectivity was further increased by changing the amplifier filters so that the uh, signal components of, of low frequencies, namely those generated from more or most fibers, were um, restricted so that all signal components below 500 hertz were um, suppressed. Now we get uh, sharp signals with amplitudes from uh, a few hundred microvolts up to, to many millivolts. It could be recorded depending on the position of the electrode in the muscle. Here is the principle of the jitter recording. This is one axon that divides into two branches and connects to motor amp plates. The uh, electrode is inserted in the muscle in such a way that activity from two muscle fibers from the same motor unit can be recorded. And here is the recording and there is a delay between the, the two signals depending on the position of the motor end plates and the individual conduction velocity of the muscle fibers. So at consecutive discharges this looks quite nice and constant, but when superimposing the sweep of the triggering on the first one, we could see that the time between the two varies a little. And that time variability is due to a time delay or a variable time at the uh, neuromuscular junction of the order of uh, 10 to 30 uh, microseconds and this is the normal variability the normal jitter in situations of disturbed neuromuscular transmission such as myasthenia gravis we could obtain uh, the following set of recordings in a given muscle in one position we get the nice double spike with the variability of the order of 20 microseconds maybe we trigger on the first. In another position of the muscle we get a, a larger uh, variability, a larger jitter and in the uh, third position we see it even larger jitter and now also intermittent uh, impulse blockings. This gives rise to fatigue and it also gives the uh, decrementing response on repeti repetitive nerve stimulation. But this is the heart of the technique that we can detect disturbed neuromuscular transmission before we have any blocking. That means uh, subclinical detection of abnormality. Now, uh, in order to quantitate this, we need to measure time between the first and the second pulse. And the original method was to have time windows with a starting uh, point here and then uh, the, a, a stop like a stopwatch we stop the measurement when the signal passed through this window so between this and this and next time between this and Nick and so on uh, this was uh, the uh, technique that is used in some equipment still Another uh, possibility was to measure between the peaks, between this peak and this peak. And for a signal like this, it gave exactly the same jitter value. But in a situation like this, where the signals are riding on each other, not uncommonly seen in 
concentric needle electrode recordings. We start the uh, measurement here and if we now use the original amplitude level technique we measure actually on different parts of the signal. This signal is measured in, in its middle and this part was measured somewhere uh, closer to the positive peak. Whereas if we use the, the peak measurements, we measure here, 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 independent more or less of the, the uh, phenomenon of riding. So uh, what I'm going to show here today is mainly the peak uh, uh, triggering method that is implemented in a few uh, EMG equipment. Here is uh, one example of a display where we have the amplitude trigger level. We start here, we stop here and measure the jitter. The uh, hit of the second signal is indicated by dots here. So this is time during the recording and this is uh, the, the time between the two pulses and the jitter is seen as the blurring part here. When we instead use the other uh, technique of peak trigger, we have the first signal here and the second here, and the variability is seen in superimposition here, and the peaks are indicated by dots. So this is the triggering peak, and this is the variable um, peak, and variation here is called the jitter, and in this case it is 45 microseconds. Because of restrictions of only using disposable material, we also had to look at other alternatives to the uh, single fiber electrode and found that concentric needle electrode of the smallest kind, namely those that we call fascia needle, can be used. Here are um, the comparison between different electrodes, monopolar, the concentric needle electrode, the regular type and the facial type and the single fiber. And here is the size of the recording surface and you see how much smaller the single fiber is. But uh, uh, this one facial is also much smaller than the conventional concentric electrode and certainly much, much less than the uh, monopolar. So we have chosen the concentric facial needle to be um, used for uh, jitter measurements. Here is um, a schematic drawing of how many muscle fibers we can have across the electrode when we indicate the uh, position of fibers as we uh, see it statistically. It's usually about 200 micron between the two muscle fibers in a normal motor unit. So many fibers are over the concentric electrode, fewer over the concentric facial, and just one fiber over the uh, single fiber electrode. Now, we, uh, with this uh, facial needle, we uh, ins in insert the needle uh, in a, sli a slightly slanted direction uh, through the skin uh, into the muscle. We hold the needle like a pen. We don't make any special uh, rotation, but we can uh, optimize the position by minimal movements in and out. And uh, we ask for a very slight uh, co uh, contraction. That is usually one of the problems we have when not being able to record good signals, that is, that the patient is activating too much. So slight uh, contraction, uh, and th then we obtain signals, and we do not start the collection of data until we have a good signal. We wait a few seconds until uh, the, the signals are good, and then we start the collection. That means that we don't need to edit much uh, afterwards. We go for 100 discharges and with a frequency of uh, 
10 per second uh, we have obtained the, all the recordings in 10 seconds and usually we record from 20 different positions in the uh, muscle and that includes uh, usually two skin insertions the amplifier setting is uh, 1 kilohertz in the single fiber we had 500 hertz but now we have 1 kilohertz to 10 uh, kilohertz and here are some uh, typical recordings this is um, uh, the triggering part and this is the, the jittering part and uh, our uh, rule is that the uh, rising phase of the signal should be without notches and shoulders and the signal should be uh, uh, exposed in a, a parallel uh, shape they, they uh, should not show any special variations here this is uh, a riding signal but it is good this shows not uh, a parallel rising phase so we skip this one but uh, we can use this one we start here and record on this one we trigger here and you see that this is uh, not parallel rising phases so they should be omitted this is a, a single fiber electrode and you see that the signals were rising with a parallel uh, shape and uh, they were constant in shape but variable in latency and here is a recording with the concentric needle electrode and here is another concentric needle electrode recording here is uh, another equipment uh, we just show the same thing again we trigger here and here we have the variation of the uh, second potential uh, and here they are shown in raster mode here is a situation where we trigger on the second one and we see the large jitter here this is increased this is abnormal we have a very slight variation in the peak which we accept but no notches or anything special uh, here similar thing we trigger here we have the variability here in the first one and we have an, uh, another motor unit activity uh, that is uh, occurring on the sweep but not disturbing the recording um, another good good recording with parallel signals we ha have here the triggering spike and one peak here one peak here and one over here this one is slow and low and we omit this because of, of certain definitions of amplitude but we can measure the jitter between the first and the second and the first and the third uh, and the jitter values here are within normal uh, limits here is another situation where we trigger here we have some fluctuation in the baseline and uh, here the riding is very severe so the f first peak of, of signal uh, number three one two three the, here is the earliest number three and here is the latest number three and we have a range here of uh, about 200 microseconds and that corresponds to a jitter of about 100 so that is uh, definitely abnormal but it's very difficult to measure this uh, uh, variability but you can see with the eye the variability here is uh, a standard display of the f uh, uh, during the recording that you will see a little later we trigger the signal uh, on a, a given highest amplitude and we obtain this in this case it, we triggered on number two and we got the jitter on number one and uh, here is the same thing in uh, superimposed mode and here is the dot plot where we have the triggering signal here as the yellow and the variability here with another color 
and the getter is 83 here and the summated uh, result. Here we have another signal with trigger on the uh, first one and see the variability here. But here is obviously a, a summation of activity from two muscle fibers. And uh, you see that this inflection point here is uh, about half the signal amplitude or below the 50% uh, level and then we can accept it. Had it been up here somewhere we should have skipped this recording but this one is acceptable. Here we have a situation where we trigger on the first and we see uh, more, more, more spike components one two three and we see that first second third and then at one occasion in this recording uh, blocking was indicated that means that there was a missing uh, signal and that was this occasion where the variability of this one is within this range and the peaks should all fall within but if there is a definite deviation from the statistical uh, most common latency then the computer uh, says that this must be some uh, mi uh, some missing of that signal if it is not within this uh, limit. In this case it was not the blocking, it was simply that um, uh, this signal was superimposed by also another signal so it is a summation here and it fell outside the, the limits for recording. Here this is uh, seen the same thing. Here's a more complex situation where we have one, two, three spikes and that this is filter effects. And uh, the computer is measuring between the first and the highest value of these two. They are so close so the software thinks it's just a one fiber but it measures on the highest amplitude. So you see here so on the third, spike third, second, third, second and so on. Uh, and this gives a dual distribution of the green dots uh, over here and it indicates a very high jitter of 91 microsecond. But uh, it's obviously a disturbance, this is not correct, so normally I should have skipped that, but just for the sake of demonstration we can restrict the acceptance limit here by changing this uh, box and we uh, restrict it so that the, the uh, um, trigger from the third peak disappears and now we have only from between the first and the second peak and the jitter went down to 27. The display of the jitter is uh, by raster but it's also very good to use um, 5 or f up to 15 for, to look at, at the, the distribution. Sometimes uh, <clears throat> the latency continuously changes uh, and there, therefore the superimposition of all uh, peaks is not a good idea. Here is the, the distribution of, of uh, 100 discharges and uh, that is uh, for statistical reasons wider but if it had been a shift in the latency, it should have been even larger. So we superimpose between 5 and 15 spikes. Here is uh, just a, a regular situation in a patient with myasthenia where we trigger on the first and see the jitter on the second peak. And sometimes we also see impulse blocking. So large jitter and impulse blocking. Here we are triggering on the uh, first peak and we can measure p uh, between 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 4. And if the jitter now happens to be very large in the first one, then all the others will uh, suffer from that. So here we're triggering on the first and we get a large jitter to all of the others, 67, 62, 58.
that this was not optimal. We, we uh, re-trigger and now we are triggering on the third uh, peak. Here is seen and now the jitter between uh, 3 and 1 is 62 but between 3 and 4 is uh, 3 and 2 is 35 and uh, 3 and 4 is, is 33. Uh, we can uh, look at the uh, display down here when I switch from the first to the next uh, recording and you see that, th that this has much lower uh, total jitter, we call it JSUM. In this case the software is automatically in the post-processing finding the best reference uh, peak from where the triggering should be made independent on how we did it during the recording and r reports the jitter from this situation. The muscle fiber can be activated either, either voluntarily as I have shown here but also with electrical stimulation where here is the muscle and we are now going to do intramuscular stimulation with a monopolar needle as cathode and a surface electrode as anode. We insert this in the muscle and have a very slight uh, stimulation strength, uh, a few milliamps and um, the frequency of 5 to 10 hertz and we insert the needle into the twitching part and record a stimulus artifact and single fiber uh, responses. Normally the, the jitter then is uh, seen indicating that we are stimulating a nerve and that this comes from the neuromuscular junction. If we are stimulating directly on the muscle fiber there is no jitter which means less than 5 microseconds. So we can tell uh, if, if we have uh, stimulated uh, one or the other and certainly it's this one that we want to measure. We can also use the surface electrode for stimulation where in this case to the uh, facial branch to the frontalis muscle and we uh, record from frontalis. There is a problem with the electric stimulation, namely at uh, borderline stimulation we get uh, both long latency and signal jitter and blocking uh, that, that takes uh, place in the point of stimulation and therefore we increase the stimulus just a little uh, from maybe 3 milliamp to 4 milliamp and then it becomes all of a sudden more stable and does not uh, uh, de decrease in jitter more with increasing stimulus. If we increase it a little more because we are uncertain about if it is supraliminal or not then a new muscle fiber is coming in because we stimulated a neighboring nerve twig and that comes in with an increased jittery so we cannot use that for measurements so we increase the stimulus strength a little and when we get that uh, stable then all of a sudden another comes in initially with increased jittery and therefore stimulation looks very easy that you can get many spikes right away for recording but we cannot trust that we we must check that all the individual spikes uh, that we want to measure is, should have uh, a super maximal stimulation that means does not change in jitter with increasing uh, stimulus so this is little time consuming and um, uh, from, from just a picture you cannot tell if a, if a jitter was real or, or artifactual. Here's a situation where we stimulate with minimum stimulation we get two spikes from the same motor unit and then we increase the stimulus just a little uh, and new uh, axon is stimulated and then we have three spikes and then we increase the stimulus a little more and then we get four spikes but this is subliminal stimulation you see that we have something that looks like blocking but this is in a normal muscle and uh, with increasing stimulus 
this one should have become uh, stable but we we uh, did not do that we just uh, measured to this three with electric stimulation we measure the jitter between the stimulus artifact and each individual peak the practical thing is that we uh, uh, stimulate with a frequency of 5 to 10 hertz and we use a slight uh, stimulus of short duration usually 0.05 uh, and we um, make sure that the spike of interest is supraliminally stimulated as I just uh, said and here we will see some examples of this uh, uh, situation this is uh, in raster mode and superimposed this is uh, in raster mode and you see the spike plot down to the right one two three four and I wonder whether that is a single spike really no it is not and you see that uh, these are not parallel lines here is another recording with multiple spikes not an unusual picture and when we superimpose we see some that are nice and this one is not uh, in parallel and this has some disturbance in the peak so we skip these two we can measure to the others here's the same thing it looks very nice but when we look at the details we see that both of them actually are have a summation pattern this is the recording from a patient with myasthenia that one motor amp plate here was normal and then this one is uh, abnormal and here you see the same patient with jittering signal here I can superimpose and you see and also we see that uh, there is uh, uh, missing impulses here this can be due to insufficient stimulation but we checked that by increasing the stimulus a little and the second never came back so it's not technical it is biology it is due to myasthenic blocking here is a situation where the second one shows a little uh, inflection above 50 percent of the amplitude so we have one jitter here and another jitter should be here these uh, recordings are omitted we just move the electrode a little so that one of the fibers is uh, dominating and this is a good recording and here is a, a special situation where we have obviously summation of different fibers and although the the measured jitter is only 13 that means normal uh, it is uh, not uh, acceptable this is not a clean single spike in a multi-center studies some years ago from uh, uh, Europe America Japan South America we uh, developed reference values for um, muscle from orbicularis oculi voluntary stimulated frontalis voluntary stimulated and extensor digitorum voluntary stimulated and this is the jitter for individual recordings and this is the mean when we have measured uh, 20 recordings and in comparison between the original single fiber uh, recording we found that the single fiber and the concentric jitter is very similar in the sensitivity to myasthenia so actually we, we can uh, safely use concentric jitter for the diagnosis as uh, shown before the single fiber is very sensitive to detect disturbances in ocular we uh, we find uh, abnormality 97 percent of the uh, recording if we record from two muscles generalized myasthenia 99 percent and even in ocular myasthenia we find abnormality in 60 percent of the recordings because ocular is defined from the clinical uh, situation uh, repetitive nerve stimulation about 50 percent and the antibodies 55 and 80 percent now something that we always uh, point to is that the increased jitter 
or abnormally decrementing response for that matter is not equal to myasthenia gravis but it is a sign of disturbed neuromuscular transmission and theoretically we see that in electrolyte disturbances and certainly uh, in our daily practice we see that in early re also so uh, it is very specific to disturb neuromuscular transmission but it is not specific to myasthenia gravis and here is a summary of um, the uh, signals to be accepted they should have a positive negative inflection without notches or shoulders so that means that they should have a parallel rising segment the negative peaks should be separated uh, for for accurate measurements and a slight amplitude variation is uh, acceptable and here is the the setting or the amplifier the filters we already mentioned the sweep speed 0.5 millisecond is a good sweep speed that allow detection of small uh, changes that we really are looking at the gain we make the signal to cover about two divisions in the uh, on the screen and we superimpose uh, 5 to 15 we have some uh, special situations here that we sometimes think that that a blocking is uh, shown uh, but the jitter is normal and that is uh, theoretically not possible so what is that well that is when we, we have another signal not a double potential pair but a single signal that is triggering because it has a high amplitude and therefore starting the sweep this signal is not the same as this one you can see that it has a different shape this one is broader than this one and it's due to the following that we trigger here and both the double potential and the single uh, reach an amplitude above the triggering and therefore initiates the the the, uh, the, the sweep so uh, this is not uh, blocking we have uh, often questions uh, of this kind can we measure fiber density with concentric needle electrode no fiber density is defined from the very small surface in the single fiber so here we have to trust the the motor unit potential parameters amplitude duration and so on to tell whether it is an abnormal distribution of muscle fibers like in in renovation or myopathy which muscle do you use for the uh, diagnosis of myasthenia well one should go for symptomatic muscle if we have a weak muscle or a fatigable muscle um, with normal jitter that is not myasthenia if we have weakness then it must be uh, impulse blocking not only jitter but also blocking and if uh, the, the, uh, the jitter is normal then it's not uh, myasthenia but otherwise we often go to, to um, facial muscles orbicularis oculi and frontalis and they are equally sensitive to the abnormality we have to remember that uh, the uh, previous injection of Botox can be seen as increased jitter also in remote muscles uh, and that can remain for quite a long time three six months and even longer so if you have a patient uh, and get an unexpected high jitter um, you have to ask the patient whether he or she had uh, got some um, injection of Botox within the last uh, year and if the jitter is normal in orbicularis oculi with ptosis what is the interpretation well ptosis is weakness so if that is due to myasthenia the jitter must be increased if it is normal consider alternate uh, diagnosis you can uh, read more about this in some links we have a special uh, homepage for single fiber information 
uh, where we have uh, a number of videos and uh, other information about upcoming meeting and so on that you can go in and look at. This is the end of the theoretical discussion about uh, jitter analysis with concentric needle electrode. Thank you for listening.